Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week and a look forward at what might happen in the next week and hopefully great information and opportunities throughout the show. Well, here it is on Friday and the market is pulling back very sharply. And that's after what was quite a strong week. We saw midweek the markets going up. In fact, everything was going up. Worldwide markets, there was a good bid in the equity markets, and the bond markets were absolutely soaring at the same time. Sometimes a rare time actually in history where you have all markets uh, pretty much moving up. People are asking me, sending quite a number of emails, how can everything be going up all at once? Interesting question. Of course, it's my goal to bring you as much information as I can and help understand the markets, help understand all the correlations, and I work on that all week long as I look at all of my charts and, of course, trade the markets. Well, I have an answer to that. Simply, the central banks, they're out there buying everything. Sovereign wealth funds, like in Japan, buying up all the stocks, buying up all the bonds. There's hardly any bonds left, it seems. ECB, in the last week, started buying corporate bonds. So what happens? Well, they want to come in and buy all of these assets. Well, somebody sells it to them, right? So what happens is the funds, the individuals, they get cash. And then they have to figure out where they're going to put it, uh, spend it, uh, sit on it, invest it somewhere. So there's a huge flow of cash coming out of the central banks who are printing all of this money. They seem to want to deny that. And uh, then that money finds its way into all of the markets. Really, they're filling a giant hole, hole that they created back in the financial crisis. And once this hole gets filled, and who says it's not filled already, then what happens is that you actually get some inflation. Right now, you know, money is pooling in uh, assets and uh, being parked in places. And at some point uh, when there is uh, economic uh, stimulus and actually we get some growth and uh, some confidence in the corporate world that they can actually uh, do some real capex, you're going to get some inflation that is going to absolutely soar. Of course, the central bank is afraid of that. Well, we saw uh, gold move up some 2% on the week. Wow, a five-day rally from midweek to midweek in the last week of about $60, really a, a big move. Silver in the same period off of its low ran about 9%, and we saw... Uh, a lot of those stocks in that category making big moves. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Also, the grain markets, they have exploded also. So soft grains, uh, a lot of bids coming into all the markets. And that all that money out there is trying to find a home. And we are seeing that. Those that aren't really willing to uh, risk uh, money, uh, put money into these markets, well, they're parking money in extraordinarily low yields. I mean, we see the 10-year uh, Bund in Germany trading down to 2.8 basis points. That's 0 0.028. That's crazy. It's incredible. 10 years. Uh, we see in Japan uh, record lows is there is trade down to a minus 15 basis points. It's just a world that we never believed that we would see. Also helping the bond market as money gets parked there is all of these people that are what they call pro stay in the UK. They want uh, to, uh, to spin things that they will be as ugly as possible. Trade collapsing, markets collapsing, all of that happening if we have a Brexit. Great Britain leaving the uh, uh, European Union. So uh, th the news that's coming out has just been nightmarish uh, as far as the picture that they're painting. They really don't want this to happen. Uh, and then uh, when you look at the polls, I mean, the polls are really very close. So they're nervous about that, and the vote is just two and a half weeks away. So uh, markets uh, could be looking at that and parking money in these bonds 
which basically don't want to give any ground and uh, these revived precious metal markets, money getting parked in there also. That could all change right around the time of the vote. And really, if they vote to leave, you might have a huge upheaval for a short period of time. It might actually be good, be good for the UK to be out of that and to not have to support these failing Southern European countries that just don't want to follow the rules and get in line and heal themselves over time. So it might be good for them. Um, in the meantime, Yellen is out there soft talking again, and uh, she's saying not likely June, uh, maybe it'll be in July. Uh, they're waiting for the data. And of course, uh, the job report last week of only creating 38,000 jobs, that's really what started a lot of this. Uh, movement into the bond market and uh, movement into a lot of these markets because they figure lots of stimulus, no uh, increase in interest rates for a while, and uh, m they're out there trying to uh, figure out how to um, deal with this in the FOMC, and of course, we're going to get that meeting coming up in the next week and of course we have to mention that we now for both parties have presumptive nominees and uh and hillary clinton and uh and donald trump and uh you they may be presumptive uh but you don't have to really presume anything when you uh start to think about the war that has begun and that uh could very well be the ugliest we have ever seen and maybe in this country uh since 1968 uh, we don't know how bad it's going to get, but it is really heating up. It's ugly, and uh, I don't know, is there a winner there? Are we a winner on either side? Boy, that's a big question. Maybe you can answer that. All right, so let's take a look at our 60-minute chart and take a look what happened in the last week of the S&P 500. The gray area is the area of overnight trading, and the white area is the area of trading during the day. So let's take a look here. What happened on Monday? Well, world markets were mostly higher. Oil was up about 1.5%. That gave a lift to the markets overnight, as you could see. SPX moved up past the 2100 barrier at that point, And Yellen came out and said, no hurry to raise rates. Tuesday also saw a follow through. Uh, the Eurozone markets were higher. Euro next up 1.25%. Asia was up small. And uh, gold fell as a report that came out that China was pausing uh, their purchases, and they have been major buyers. Uh, West Texas uh, uh, light crude went up over $50, and that helped the tone. You can see you've got a rally here, but then late in the day, they started to sell off. On Wednesday, world markets, well, they were narrowly mixed overnight. The dollar was weak again, and that helped lift gold and oil. ECB, that was the first day of them buying the corporate bonds. German bunds were down to three basis points, and now today even lower than that, as I said. U.S. Treasury strong again as there is this big hunt for yield going on. And when you look at our 10 years yielding 1.65% or less now, um, that looks pretty fat when you compare that to the rest of the world. So that's why they're investing here for that measly little bit amount of money. Uh, and the World Bank actually came out and cut the growth forecast by a little bit. And uh, Goldman Sachs comes out and says on Wednesday, there's a risk of a big drop. Market opens higher, but then oil inventories come out and there was a quick drop, but that didn't hold them. And they moved up to the high point of the week. Our target, as we will show you, was to get up into a resistance zone in the S&P 500 over the 2016, 28, 20, 21, 16 or 18 area, it gets to 2120 and uh, then starts to retreat. Profit taking comes in, world equity markets lower on Thursday, Eurozone down about eight tenths, US stocks ease back after those big gains, but the bonds continue to surge, incredible. At this point on Thursday, the 10 years were down to 1.7%. Oil lower helps the market uh, early on down 1.5%, but then you get a big comeback as the buyers seem to want to come back in the market. Now note the gap here on Friday in the ES. This is because we had the roll. So that's not a big uh, downside gap um, as, as it looks. Uh, it's a smaller gap than that, and, uh, but the market is 
getting hammered now as we're doing this show with S&P's down 25. Helping that is light crude down 2.5%. Eurozone, though, was sharply lower. DAX down 2%. CAC car owned those down 1.7%. All on Brexit fears and, of course, profit taking. And man bond surge again. There's the broken record uh, with a 10-year yields down to 1.63. I think we're going to get into a very volatile period in the bond market. And I'm also thinking that the second half of the year is going to bring us some record low yields in the bond market. There is still some risk, though, of a yield pop in the near term. And uh, I'll talk about that later on uh, in some of my other videos. And uh, Abe comes out and talks about more stimulus, but that doesn't save the market uh, as uh, these markets are uh, sharply lower today and it's been a while since we've had this kind of selling on any day let's take a look at our uh, economic calendar earnings calendar there is not uh, there's only one earnings report on the stocks that i follow which is oracle after the close on thursday there is of course some big news coming out uh, the biggest events of the week on wednesday the fomc meeting at two o'clock eastern time and the Fed's uh, and uh, Janet Yellen's uh, press conference at 2.30 Eastern Time. Also on Thursday, we get the CPI Consumer Price Index in the morning. Uh, they're going to already have those numbers uh, when they have their meeting, though they will not tell us. And then uh, 8.30 in the morning on Friday, we get housing starts, which sometimes are able to move the market. So that is our earnings and economic calendar for the coming week. That is the opening segment and uh, when we come back we're going to look at a bunch of stocks and even some ETFs as we look at our best and our worst of the week and I'll be right back. For the best of the week, it's still the material stocks, steel stocks, uh, some of the energies that were the best movers, man, some of these are really volatile. Take a look here as we look at Cliff, 22% winner, the best one of my 325 stocks that I look at, and uh, big gain. We talked a couple of weeks ago about the DBB, did a great video on that one and said this was setting up for a big move on the upside right here. It was likely it would lift this group. And you can see two weeks in a row big on the upside as it comes back up to threaten that area in cliff. Just a strong bottom in there, big inverted head and shoulders that's forming. And you got to say, you got to really like this stock. Next one we're going to look at is Navistar, NAV. And take a look in here, a similar pattern as we see this uh, stock move up. This was a surprise in here as this stock reports a profit. Nobody expected that to happen. You can see in here the cyclicality, the rising and selling phase, and the new rising phase right over there. So big gain. The stock gives up some ground, as you can see right in here. And uh, we would say that this one looks like a stock that you can buy on a pullback. Where is the location to buy it? We like to buy it here around the slim ribbon, the middle point right there. We'll call it between 1260, 1280. It got down there on Friday, so uh, that looks like a spot that you could do some buying in there as uh, it's early in this upside move in uh, Navistar. Uh, offshore drillers, um, they were uh, pretty strong. We saw NBR, the big winner, up 18%. Uh, Noble Corp up 13%, uh, Rig also up about uh, 15%. Take a look, we'll look at this NBR chart so you'll get an idea of what the offshore drillers look like. These guys have been lagging, I mean, not really getting much of a move at all, and now they are starting to catch fire. Nice cyclicality that we see in here also as we look at our cycle charts. And you can see that the rally right there and the sell-off, that was a negative pattern, right? Because it peaked really early in this cycle. But this one peaked really late, and that's what's called a right-hand translation. Moving up again, probability of exceeding that high was about 3 to 1. And you could see we have already done that. So only three weeks into this advance, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more gains in here. But I'm getting a little hesitant about the whole light crude and energy structure.
structure that I'm looking at. So uh, maybe these things don't have a lot to go uh, and you might just get some more volatility in them. So that's a look at neighbor. We'll take a look at US Steel. This one up 14%. This one has our colored phasing in there. And uh, in this rising green zone, you can see right in here, note the DBB in here also that we were comparing it against, that blue uh, broken line. And in this rising phase, and there it goes taking off on the upside. Pretty good probability it'll try the 21 number again at some point here in uh, coming weeks. Uh, and uh, if it doesn't and rolls over and fails and takes out this low, it would be a desperate thing. They would be in a lot of trouble, but right now we're just looking at this green phase and see that it looks uh, pretty solid. Uh, AK Steel also up on the week. US Steel up 14%, AK Steel is up 11%. Uh, we saw a big, big move, a big bounce in gold and a big move in silver this week. Uh, and the silver's got a nice play. Hecla up 10%. Uh, AG is up 13% on the week. We showed a pattern in these silvers and golds that they look like they just wouldn't give up any ground. Uh, and they had had this huge move. So uh, we saw this is a corrective phase right in here. Now note all these declining phases that I point at and you'll see that they actually fall during this period. This one only gave you two weeks on the downside and we were really saying this could go up again and you could see it explodes back up there. So uh, two weeks into this advance, it's very unlikely that that makes a top. So you might look for some spots to buy some of these silver stocks if they take a dip. A similar thing that we saw in the GDX, this up 8% on the week, a good representation of all of these uh, stocks in the gold silver category. We talked about that it was making a bottom and that we thought it would do better than gold. Uh, when we got the next pop, this was the area we were expecting the low in May. You see that came right there into the support area and then explodes up to a new high. So we were not surprised about that at all, up 8% on the week also. So uh, these gold and silver stocks, we expect to see a lot of volatility in there, but I, we think if you buy them when they're pulling back, you're still gonna get paid on the upside in there pretty handsomely on days that we get buying in the precious metals in the uh, underlying commodities. Uh, uh, in uh, other things to mention, we've seen a big move in the agricultures and the grains. Uh, Mosaic, that's a strong one. That's up 7% ev up on the week. We think that's a decent looking pattern in there also. F5 up about 7%. Uh, in this one, um, we see that uh, they had hired uh, Goldman Sachs to shop for buyers. Uh, in there and uh, that one take a look at what we call a bullish three methods pattern a big upside spike three bars down inside the middle and that one looks like uh, it could pop back to 125 and one more we're going to look at is WBA which is Walgreens uh, Walgreens boots as they call it now since it uh, merged with a UK uh, company uh, so uh, here is WBA and uh, this was another nice pattern in here as it moved down perfectly timing wise. So again, we're gonna show you the cycle patterns. Look at the declining phases as these um, different uh, cycle brackets point to the corrective phases. You can see how they align right in here. It's just crazy good right there. You see that right there. And after each one of them a rally, this get into the support zone and declines and then rallies right here. Resistance up here in the 84 to 88 area, pretty wide resistance band right there. But the odds are very high that it's gonna get up into that area before this is over with. So up 5% on the week <clears throat> and a really nice pattern. That's the best of the week. And we'll be right back with the worst. For the worst of the week, the worst group that I'm looking at here is really the biotechs. Interesting, BIIB, that's Biogen IDEC, falls 15%. Uh, as uh, there's disappointment over an MS drug, uh, Regeneron down 8%, Celgene down 4%. Celgene is uh, the one that we have a negative signal out in, and I think we've got some short sellers out there in the people that subscribe to us. Uh, I wanna look at this BIIB pattern uh, in here as this thing moves down so sharply 
and uh, this of course uh, stock comes from 480 all the way down to uh, nearly 240 so the stock is cut in half already but this is really a negative pattern because you see as we got into this area where this blue uh, a cycle bracket uh, is the um, is the IBB and uh, then uh, the uh, dark cycle bracket here is uh, BIIB uh, Biogen and they were both bottoming right here so you got the rally like you were supposed to but then you have this giant break right over there uh, of this 15% uh, decline on the week and uh, that sets it up to a decline all the way out here through August September so we don't like this pattern especially don't like these big downside gaps that we have in here you can see in here when we look right here that this uh, is a had that big gap over here and now this uh, other gap on the downside yeah the stock could get a bounce but man this is a bad one also have to you know mention that uh, now that Hillary Clinton is uh, the presumptive nominee and also she hates this group hates the drugs hates hates any fact that they have any pricing power and uh, if she gets stronger in the polls and she has a little bit recently that's not good for this group either so uh we've hated this group uh for a number of reasons though that being one of them and these patterns have remained negative and you can see what's happened i mean they have really really gotten hurt and i think there's more to go uh nrg energy uh that stock uh, in the utility category ubs says sell uh, and uh, this is uh, looks to me like a negative pattern I think down into August in there and uh, so we're in agreement with that one NRG urban outfitters that's what we have to look at here URBN this was one of the holdouts of the uh, of the retail group of the stocks that didn't quite get annihilated well yet and now all of a sudden they got problems they come out and warn analysts downgrade the stock they're down 10 percent on the week this has got our uh phasing in there the colored phasing and the uh rising phases are green phases the yellow phases are corrective phases and the red phases are negative phases so uh what we see in here is that well we had a nice pattern right the big rally we got the warning of the topping right over here. We put that in there on the engulfing pattern, and it's supposed to fall right into this timing, and you can see it did so. It got the rally as expected, but didn't even make it halfway back up, and now is threatening the low. That's bad. It turns the pattern down, and it says this stock could go all the way back down to $20. It's now at 26 and decline all the way through. This is gonna turn yellow, uh, and uh, then if it gets underneath this area here, it turns red. And we really think it struggles all the way out to this late August period right over there. We would be a seller in there. Now let's take a look at the daily chart. And you'll see in here on Urban, it kind of rallies right up into this area of resistance right around that 89 day moving average then puts this island in there the big gap up and then the big gap down it left the abandoned baby which was bullish right now it leaves this island turns the pattern down and we think this stock has got problems so if it gets a bit of a bounce we think it's a sell let's switch over now and take a look at a different kind of a stock and that is a 3d printer ddd down nine percent on the week this has been you know a problem company in here and uh, they you know everybody loved it is trading up at 70 trades all the way down uh, to uh, sub uh, seven dollars six dollars and now it's putting in what looks to me like a base the COO left the CMO left they both resigned this week but this is a bullish pattern right over here and we're coming to the end of it we're gonna say a test of this area of the 11 or so and then maybe we start to get some good news but this looks like a major bottom to us so while all this happened and it's down nine percent and Stratasys right with it down seven percent this looks to us like it is a stock that could be putting in a bottom we'd be a buyer in that area down around 10 11 bucks next one we're going to look at is bby going back to retail bed bath and beyond 
Well, we were negative on this one. You see this yellow zone, and we thought it was going to decline out through the August period right there. And you can see in here as it gets a decline of 9% on the week on no news. We searched all over the place, and we believe uh, going to decline all into this area in August. A bad pattern in there in BBBY. <clears throat> also on the downside in retail, GameStop uh, down 9% on the week. We think that one is bottom soon also let's take a look at Chipotle which is down a seven percent on the week this has been a troubled stock man it's down like thirty dollars this week uh, on top of the trouble that it's had before uh, we expected that there would be some test of that 400 level and uh, actually uh, uh, some analyst comes out today and says sell the stock it's going to 285 well based on the pattern that we see in here you can see that purple uh, cycle pattern in there and uh, this is what it's following right here and it rallies and then breaks under this level another stock that looks like it's going to fall into August so we think it's sub 400 we don't know about 285 uh, that the analyst came out and talked about but uh, that one does uh, look like it's got lots of problems still so maybe you get a bounce in there but uh, it's going to take a while before they repair the goodwill that they had with all of the people that uh, loved their food. I actually like their food. I think it's really good. And I think it's going to be a long time before they have any health issues again uh, after what they've gone through. But it's going to take some time to fix this stock and maybe another few months based on the pattern that we're looking at. I'm going to take a look at solars. This is interesting. Um, Sun Power down 7% on the week. These are volatile. CSIQ, we think it's in a buy area. That one down 6% on the week. The one I want to look at is only down 1% on the week, and that is Solar City. This one in here, you know, if, if there's news I want to talk about, it's just that Solar City, you know, it has a relationship uh, with Elon Musk and Tesla, and everything was about them building all the batteries uh, for uh, Tesla's cars. And in the meantime, Tesla comes out and they make deals with other companies. Big deal with Panasonic on supplying batteries. So where is Solar? Uh, where is Solar City in this deal? Take a look over here as we look at this chart. And this pattern is just sickening when you look at this one. Uh, it uh, looks to me like the stock is going sub 16 out into July, right over there. These, when you see these two blue spikes, you know that we're timing the decline into that period right over there. And uh, so the rally came right in here. It was supposed to look at the stall right at that. 34 week moving average rolls over it try it tries to get through the 13 week moving average right there and can't do that either this is trouble right in here and how are they doing earnings wise well they're not going to get saved doesn't look like by tesla and look at this 16 lost nine bucks 17 lost projected eight bucks who would want to buy this company if it's not going to make all the batteries for tesla this is really we'll call it a solar piece of crap how do you like that Next one, or the last one we're going to look at is Netflix, NFLX. And uh, this pattern in here, talk about piece of crap. Um, look at this pattern uh, as the timing was for a decline right into here. You see that? And you see it hits the Fib extension number right there. Really interesting. Then it gets a rally right into the resistance zone. That's this rally. And then this big pattern takes over and it turns away down from that 34 week moving average and that resistance and has this big, big decline right over there. Um, analysts, uh, they came out with uh, uh, negative comments on it this week. It's down 6% on the week in there, and we think it's going to decline into late July or August. You can see here on our daily cyclical pattern right in here that what we're looking for is... <clears throat> a decline into this period right here well basically today right an attempted rally you can see our dotted line right in here and then when that attempted rally is over with which we think will be a great sell opportunity just over a hundred bucks maybe close to a hundred bucks then we think it gets wailed on again right over there so uh, that is a look at Netflix and uh, a stock that also looks pretty sick that is our worst for the week and we're going to be right back with our short-term view.
All right, before we get into the short-term view of the coming week, if you liked our charts, all of our cycle work, you can have them right on your TOS platform. We'll send them to you every week with all our work on them. Just go to our website and look at Level 4 Membership. All right, short-term view of the coming week. We do this every single week. I've done this for years. And always, uh, I'm accountable to what I said in the previous week, always trying to be at least 60 or 65% correct. And this week we were... 40 or 45 percent. Really not a great week for us. Uh, gold just had a much bigger move uh, recovery than we expected. It has pattern has really healed itself. And the bond market, of course, as I talked about many times in this show, money flowing into there like crazy. And that has uh, been much stronger and an earlier bottom than we expected in the bigger picture. So let's get right into this as we look at light crude, which we were right about the pattern in the last week. We just were wrong about the prices on the range. We thought it would be range bound. And we thought that it would get up into the resistance area over 150 over 50 but then kind of get stuck there at about the $50 number where that resistance was well it got all the way up here into the mid 51s and that was a lot stronger than we expected it to though we did expect it to get up there and give ground where did we get that from well it was this repeating cycle in here that's basically six seven eight days long you can see the pattern right in here and note the cycle brackets there uh, are the guide to the pattern and this is now seven days right here so this followed our pattern perfectly in staying in a range and it just got a little higher than we expected now what do we expect for the next week well if you believe the repeating pattern that just has gone on and on and on and you get a little help from the uh, projection oscillator on the bottom then you could see how oversold it is right there we expect it to get a bounce now note how it's been dancing up the slim ribbon up here now testing the 21 exponential moving average right there we think it's going to hold up in this positive of momentum for the next week and then give us a rally that is a great short sale so we're looking for maybe another day or so on the downside in here get into this support area right here uh, and then bounce into midweek maybe getting up to about fifty dollars and eighty cents right up over here doesn't have to get quite that high but we're looking for that pattern to continue you see that we think that rally is a sale and the intermediate pattern has is rolling over and that's going to be a nice short sale we could see it getting over 50 and then falling all the way down under 47 which was the range we expected in the last week and then ultimately getting down into this big green zone uh, out into july uh, down in the area of $44, $45. So that's our ultimate target. We're giving away so much here. Uh, and in the uh, meantime, we'll just look for a little bit down, an attempted rally to short, and then move down again. That's the pattern we see shaping up right now. Now the gold market, which really got hammered, uh, did a great job coming back in here and has really healed itself. Uh, we are out to, we are expanded out to two years on here. Uh, because what we want to do is tell people that get our charts how to get the proper cycle alignments and then we come in so that you can actually read it. What we were looking for <clears throat> was a low uh, in that nested low area that you see right there. Let's get this lined up properly. And uh, that we thought that the GDX was bottoming in here and that uh, was going to get a big rally. The uh, gold stocks when gold bounced and gold got into this intermediate support zone here. About a few days Days late for us and then had a big bounce the fact that it got up close to this 78.6 percent right there that is good news for the gold market it's really done a great job repairing itself and it really uh, those that watch future speak on Wednesday will be showing you another cycle that has shown up again that really could be a better picture than we've been painting recently right now what we're gonna look for however is a corrective week now you can see in here what we're looking at <coughs> is this blue pattern right in here so it's uh you could see it rallied here and then sold off here that's the <coughs> excuse me the blue pattern rallying in here and now getting into this corrective week we are looking for if it's a really bullish occurrence for it to pull back only to this 1262 number right here on that 23 percent more likely it pulls back somewhere down over here uh, closer 
to this uh, 1250 number, but we're going to be looking for 1262, 1250. Those are really uh, the numbers that we're going to look uh, for in here. Actually, these two are reversed. The 618 is the top one, and the 50 is the bottom one. So the 618 is the one uh, we're looking at there, which would be the reciprocal of the 38.2. So that's at 50% right, uh, right there at 1250. Uh, I know that sounded like a lot of gibberish, but I really do get it. Uh, so that's what we're looking for in the next week, a pullback in here, 1262 uh, down to possibly 1250, and then moving up again. So um, this would be kind of looking like this, one week or so, we'll give it four to six days, and uh, then another pop over here. Much better pattern than we expected it to be, and that is a look at gold. So I don't really want to make that short side trade, to tell you the truth. Uh, because of the power that we see in here, but yeah, I think the pullback's going to happen. Uh, we got uh, the 6E market, the uh, euro currency, right on. Um, we thought it was going to give some back, and you could see it's fallen back sharply. We were suspicious of a bounce in the dollar. Um, the dollar bounce came actually a couple days sooner than we expected, but this is really the pattern that we expected, and you could see the euro currency goes into the minor resistance and falls into the minor support. So this is a, a similar pattern to gold, where it might have another day or two or something, three down in here, uh, though it's a little shorter pattern. Uh, and then gold, and then get another rally over here. So we don't think that there's a lot more downside in here in the euro currency. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, we put out a bearish notice on the dollar this morning uh, as the dollar was popping up again and got into some resistance area. So we're looking for this area to hold in here, 112 and a half to 113 as the minor support, and then get a rally. We're going to call this a kind of a little bit of down up week uh, like this as I have it drawn in here and uh, test uh, potentially um, the 113 number down here and then bounce. We're going to call it a small up week here in the euro currency. Next one we're going to look at in here is the bond market. We're going to look at forward slash ZN. And man, as I said, we've got these 10 years down to 1.63% look at that intermediate resistance zone that really was a fooler to us uh, as we expected this period in here to give us one more low and ultimately this was the important low on the intermediate pattern uh, it's shocking to us uh, as it was quite early but that's what happened and as we move up through this resistance it's very meaningful. So where are we now? Well, we have th this dotted line is the 30 year right over here. And this is the, the um, shorter pattern here in the 10 year. Uh, and that says to us that this is going to be a, a corrective week in the bonds. We're going to look for a pullback here in the bond market down to about 130.24 right over here. But then we think it's up again, you know, a similar pattern to what we're looking at in gold also. We're going to call this a small down week, just a corrective week in the bond market. But we don't think it's going to go very far on the downside nor last very long just in this one week here, and then we're likely to be pushing up pretty sharply again as money just looks for some kind of yield to get. Man, can you believe 1.63 on the 10-year, and that looks like fat yields here in the world? Boy, I can't stop saying that. All right, so uh, let's talk about the stock market. What we expected to happen was that the upside momentum was going to continue and that it was going to get up into a resistance, a confluence of resistance that we had put up there. We talked about it on some other videos during the week. And it got, on Wednesday, we talked about it, you know, getting up there and stalling and then going into some correction. And that, it just got into it and absolutely rolled over. And now we have this big down day today. So note that there's some supports in here, uh, first that we're going to look at, right around this area of um, 2084, right over there. That looks like a pretty interesting spot in here. Now, where it's trading right now, 2091 on that 21-day uh, exponential moving average, 
that also is a pretty key area. It doesn't really have to get much below these levels that I'm talking about. Now, there's an interesting shift in here. Note the dotted line. I'm going to have to talk more about this on Future Speak on Wednesday to really talk about it. But we have a repeating pattern that uh, I want you to see that's essentially called a half cycle. So that's this small pattern right in here. You could see this rally right here and then this sell-off right in here. That's the half cycle. It's nine days long approximately. Well, nine days long here too from this low to this low. Oops, nine days long here from this low to this low. So we have this nine-day rhythm going on that's made up this 18 to kind of 20-day pattern that we see in here. And here's the perfect nine days in here also. And right now you can see we're five days into that. So that gives us four days right in here of likely trouble as this shift in this cycle had occurred. So this is some more advanced stuff and hopefully I'll have my cycle workshop ready for uh, people to see in coming months and we'll talk more about a lot of this stuff. But what this says, getting through all of this uh, technical jargon and gibberish, is that there's about another four days of corrective period right in here. And that's what we're looking for. The market's likely to try to get a bounce in here, but then I think it, play, it pulls back. This does not turn anything negative at all. And all it does is it corrects uh, this move from this level here to this level right over here in a modest correction and then gets ready for another try up here. So I think this is going to coincide, and I was talking about this with some people on Twitter today, with the S&P 500 and the oil market, oil trying to get up one more time. And then after that, I think there's some danger out over here. So maybe we get to test this 2140 number at the top of this area up over here before this is over with but for this coming week and we're only talking about short term I'm gonna look for you know most of this week to be kind of choppy down and if we get some rallies that they fail and then the following week is the week that looks like it has a better chance to go up as we get into uh, the next nine day pattern right over here that's right here that will be that shifted cycle and this one right over here down a few days right here and then up into the following week after that that's what it looks like to me and of course I'm always looking for the highest probabilities to share those with you don't forget go to our website and take a look at our memberships I hope there's been great information for you that's the end of the show as we have done it send me your emails or questions and uh, I will, of course, see you next week in all of our videos. And I am always wishing you great trading. Well, I'm going to the center and I'm going to do a steady show. And I know all my fans want to learn how to make some dough.